There are at least three ways to build most EDH decks. St strong. Fun, 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 fun. Mm. And mean. Let's look at the strong, fun, and mean ways that I would build Yuriko, the Tiger's Shadow. And the video starts right now. Special thanks to our Patreon supporters who power our channel. Check out our Patreon for monthly giveaways, exclusive content, and even a starring role in our fanfight series. Link in the description below. Hello and welcome to the day. Thank you for spending your time with us. Welcome back to another episode of Jake and Joel or Magic. I am Joel. We're going to talk about Yuriko the Tiger's Shadow and building this ninja in Commander. But before we do, if you would, go down there, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. It really helps us out. Let's take a look at this Commander. We have got a legendary human ninja here today, and I have gotten whooped by this commander. So let's talk about the three ways that I would build it. Eureka the Tiger's Shadow, three mana, black, blue, one for a one, three with commander ninjutsu. Pay a black, pay a blue, return an unblocked attacker you control to your hand, put this card onto the battlefield from your hand or the command zone, tapped and attacking. Whenever a ninja you control deals combat damage to a player, reveal the top card of your library and put that card into your hand. Each opponent loses life equal to that card's converted mana cost. So we want some unblockable attackers, we want some ninjas, and we wanna know what card is on top of our deck so we can get maximum damage rolling. For the three ways that I would build this commander, I would go the strong way and go with unblockable. There's a lot of ways that we can give our ninjas unblockable. So every time they're getting through, we are getting to reveal cards and deal damage for fun, we're going to lean heavy into the Ninja Tribal and go over some of the strongest ninjas that you can run in Commander. And for mean, we are going to know what's coming on the top of our library through a little divining, if you will. Let's get into the strong way. I love Cover of Darkness in this deck. For just two mana, you're gonna get an enchantment that comes into play. You choose a creature type, so we choose ninjas for this. And creatures of the chosen type have fear, meaning they can't be blocked except by artifact creatures and or black creatures. So we eliminate almost every color from being able to block any of our attacking creatures as long as they are the chosen creature type. So that's pretty huge. As we know, we've got some cards that can make all of our creatures any creature type. Xenograft enters a battlefield, we choose ninjas. Each creature you control is the chosen type in addition to its other types. So that's exactly what we want to combine with Cover of Darkness so that we've got a bunch of unblockable attackers happening. Maskwood Nexus is also a viable, super strong option for this. Creatures you control are every creature type, and the same is true for creature spells you control and creature cards you own that aren't on the battlefield. Plus, we have the ability to make our 2-2 ninjas with the tree just with three mana. This is a huge card in this deck and it absolutely should be in there. I think that would be very helpful. Keeper of Keys comes into the battlefield and makes you the monarch. So you get to draw a card at the end of that turn. And at the beginning of your upkeep, if you're the monarch, creatures you control straight up can't be blocked this turn. Absolutely a huge fan of this five mana human rogue mutant. Even though it's not a ninja, I think it fits really well into this deck. Open into Wonder is one of the best sorcery speed ways to do this. X target creatures can't be blocked this turn, period. And until end of turn, those creatures gain whenever this creature deals combat damage, draw a card. So we get more value off of this two mana X sorcery that we can play and just push all of our creatures through. Larceny is so strong in this deck. Plus the art on this is absolutely dope. Whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to a player, that player discards a card from his or her hand. This is gonna put a target on you, but it's a very strong ability to combine with a bunch of one ones that are all unblockable, swinging through and dealing damage. Eureka's triggering, Larceny's triggering so much value off of all of these cards. Whisper Steel Dagger is pretty new, but I've loved the times that I've played with it. Equipped creatures get in plus two, plus oh, and whenever it deals combat damage to a player, you can cast a creature spell from that player's graveyard this turn. You can spend mana as though it were mana of any color to cast that spell. So any of our stuff that's unblockable, getting through, punching for a little bit, but we get to recast something that's died during the course of the game. That sounds pretty huge to me and I'll definitely take it. Whispering Madness is a similar card. For four mana, you get to cipher a sorcery onto one of your attackers. Each player discards his or her hand then draws cards equal to the greatest number of cards a player discarded this way. So it's a wheel the first time you cast it, then it ciphers onto a creature. And whenever that creature deals combat damage, you get to cast it again for free. So we can just wheel everybody through their hands, through their decks and maybe win that way. That's the strong base that I would build for this deck. Let's look at a fun way to get a sub theme into it and go with ninjas. 
there are not a ton of legal playable ninjas in the commander pool to pick from i don't even think there are 40 options but some of the top ones are very strong like fallen shinobi it's got ninjutsu so you can return an unblocked attacker to your hand and put this onto the battlefield tapped and attacking as a shock as a surprise and when it deals combat damage to a player that player exiles the top two cards of their library and until in a turn we can play those cards for free that could be enormous that could be huge we could get some 10 cost mana spell that is just absolutely going to be brutal and just cast it for free because our fallen shinobi punched through for a little bit of damage ingenious infiltrators also got ninjutsu for two and whenever a ninja you control deals combat damage to a player draw a card so this is sort of like coastal piracy but on a creature of our creature type that we're trying to build into this deck whenever a ninja you control deals combat damage to a player draw a card that's huge this is almost like an enchantment that you don't really want to put in harm's way because all of your ninjas are suddenly card drawers and that can keep you in the game much longer with an attacking deck silent blade oni is another one i love for six mana you've got ninjutsu on this demon ninja and whenever it deals combat damage to a player you look at that player's hand and then you can cast one of the cards in their hand without paying its mana cost another one like fallen shinobi that you get free spells it can absolutely just be super brutal. Ink Eyes, Servant of Onis, our rat ninja. You see it a lot in rat decks. It's got a five cost ninjutsu. Whenever it deals combat damage to a player, you put a target creature card from that gr player's graveyard onto the battlefield under your control for free. That's huge. Plus just two mana to regenerate it so it stays around through board wipes and such absolutely ridiculous i like sakashima's student in this it's got a two cost ninjutsu and it enters the battlefield as a copy of any creature that you control except it's a ninja also in addition so it can copy one of your ninjas it can become a ninja copying something else that's absolutely ridiculous like keeper of keys something like that if we're gonna run sakashima student we could probably just run sakashima of a thousand faces as well enters a battlefield as a copy of another creature you control except it can copy your legendaries so that the because the legendary rule doesn't apply so you can get multiple copies of Eureka. you can get multiple copies of fallen shinobi or silent blade oni that have these ridiculous abilities making you that much more powerful with your board state throat slitter is a good removal ninja for three at ninjutsus and when it co deals combat damage to a player you destroy target non-black creature that player controls so that's what removal can look like in this deck and then we've also got cunning evasion whenever a creature you control becomes blocked you may return it to its owner's hand. So if any of these non-block situations don't work out or something gets destroyed at instant speed and suddenly they're able to block, this is a nice little backup plan to be like, whoops, don't want those things to die. I'll come back to the hand and I'll recalculate how we're going to achieve this plan and come back at you later. So that's the fun way that I would pay off Eureka. Let's look at the mean way that I would build this deck and affect what the top of our library is. We want big spells to get hit by Eureka's triggers to do the maximum amount of damage to our opponents when the combat damage goes through. So Sensei's Divining Top is going to allow us to do that. Pay one mana, look at the top three, put them back in any order, done. That's what we'll do every single time that it's about to trigger. We'll just look at the top three and put the most expensive CMC on top so that Eureka can deal a ton of damage. We've also got a land here. I don't put a lot of lands in these videos, but I think that this one is relevant. Enters the battlefield tapped, but you can pay one to add a mana of any color in your commander's color identity and when that mana is spent to cast a creature spell that shares a creature type you get to scry one so we can multiple times over scry one when we're casting creature spells that are ninjas or humans or really anything if we've got maskwood nexus on the battlefield and every time we do that we get to scry we get to see what's on top and then we can attack through knowing that a very expensive card or a land that we pitched to the bottom and we're taking our chances with the top it helps us make sure that we're going to hit big spells that's a god of the sea at the beginning of your upkeep you get to scry one plus you've got a nice little synergistic boost here with target creature you control can't be blocked this turn love that's in this deck retreat to coral helm is interesting because when you landfall you can either scry one which again is going to make sure that we've got at least not a land on top of our library and or you can tap or untap target Get creatures so that you may affect the battlefield and get more attackers through since at its core this deck is an attacking deck sphinx of foresight i really like because at the beginning of your upkeep you get to scry one plus it's a four four flying body if it happens to be in your opening hand and you get to scry three at the beginning of your first upkeep yep. however we're just looking for that triggered automatic scry at the beginning of every turn so that we can either put a land on the bottom or make sure that we've got a nice chunky cmc spell to trigger with your 
Doom Whisperer Surveil is another way to come at this. It doesn't always have to be Scry. Because with Surveil, we get to look at the top two with Doom Whisperer and put them back in any order or just toss them into the graveyard if we don't need them. And since it's a pay to life with a colon, we can do that ability as many times as we want, as many times as we've got life for. I think that Doom Whisperer is one of the few non ninjas, like some of the cards, some of the creatures that you've seen in the video that I would actually put into this deck. We've got cards like Crystal Ball. I always tell Jake, I've got a standing agreement with him. If I can put Crystal Ball in a video, Jake, it will be in there. It's one of Jake's favorite cards of all time. Paying one to scry two, this is huge. Eureka, right as the combat damage is about to go through, let's Crystal Ball, let's look at what we got in there, and we'll put the most expensive thing we can on top. So we need big spells to hit. What cards would I recommend for that? Temporal Trespass is great. It's a huge spell masquerading as a smaller spell because we've got Delve, and we can exile cards from our graveyard to pay for one colorless of this. 9, 10, 11 mana to cast Temporal Trespass. Hitting 11 on a Eureka trigger and dealing 11 to each opponent. That would be pretty huge. Plus, it's a good spell. Take an extra turn after this one if we actually do go to cast it. That's not bad. We could also run Kindred Dominance. I think fits in this deck perfectly. 7 mana. That's a huge spell to hit with Eureka. And choose a creature type. Destroy all creatures that aren't of the chosen type. Are you kidding me? All of our ninjas survive? Great. Thank you so much, Kindred Dominance. You absolutely belong in this deck. That's the strong, fun, and mean ways that I would build Yuriko the Tiger Shadow. Let's close the book. Thanks so much. Let me know how you build Yuriko the Tiger Shadow. This one runs the gamut from casual decks up to pretty competitive decks, so I'm interested to hear how yours performs. While you're down there, click that like and subscribe button for me if you wouldn't mind. It really helps us out. And other than that, I'm tapped out, and I'll catch you later.